everyone has been uh, kind of been speaking about various different topics. And one of the things that we sometimes forget about is accounting and how people sometimes see accounting as you know a necessary evil, right? And uh, and kind of being in the uh, in the in the form that we are and kind of speaking to business owners, I think it's important that we speak a, l a little bit more about it. Uh, believe it or not, we were here since nine o'clock this morning, and there were countless countless questions about. Oh man, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm starting maybe to roll out a product or roll out a service, and I have no idea how I'm going to get paid. <laughs> and that's unfortunate, right? So we're going to be talking a little bit more about that today. Does any has anybody heard of FreshBooks at all? Can, can I get a raise of hands? Everybody? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, has anybody? Um, I guess let's put it this way. Does anybody like to do accounting? It's a bit of a weird question, right? So, some people, okay, so, so maybe some accountants in the room, yes? Some bookkeepers, maybe? Okay, good. We're not here to insult you, don't worry. We're here to have fun and try to teach other and how important this is to the business owners that are in today's room. You know, a lot of people don't realize sometimes, they, they feel that, um, they feel that, uh, like I said, accounting is a necessary evil. Uh, you know, I'm not a CPA, I don't know how to do this double entry stuff. You know, and I think, but I think it's important to, to really kind of have that conversation. I myself um, have been working with FreshBooks actually just shy of uh, five years. I've been working alongside, I'm the program manager for their, uh, their accountant network. Uh, I'm also uh, running their reseller programs and the various different programs that, I ha that we have up there. Um, and one of the things that people really talk to us about is, you know, what exactly FreshBooks does, as I say, in comparison to the bigger, larger, more robust accounting systems out there. So, you know, anybody heard of QuickBooks? Raise the hands. Perfect, perfect. So great, great tool. It's been really the de facto tool out there. Um, and a lot of people use it, uh, even though they might not have a complete grasp of the tool, right? They get taught a little bit and maybe they screw it up here and there and the accounting professional has to go back and kind of fix everything up. You know, or, or who's, who's the proverbial shoebox client that puts their receipts in the shoebox and sends it to their accounting professional. Who does that, anybody? Oh, okay, so uh, is it safe to say a lot of us are using some type of tool to help you get organized? Can I get a raise of hands, yes? Fantastic. So FreshBooks has been around for about 13 years. Um, we're, we've always been residing in Toronto, Canada. We're completely Canadian. Uh, a lot of our business uh, actually resides in the United States simply because of the sheer population density that they have down there. Uh, and obviously because they need something that is simpler for many of the business owners out there. Um, and, and one of the things that we actually focus on specifically is on service-based small businesses. Um, so these are usually the, 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 the kind of the sweet spot that we talk about is kind of like zero to 10 employee-based businesses um, that are usually charging for their time. People like trades or accountants or consultants, let's say, uh, you know, graphic designers, you know, people that are usually, you know, providing some type of, uh, you know, service and getting paid for those service. And usually need to maybe invoice to actually get that, that revenue back from, uh, from those clients that they're providing the services for, right? And one of the things that people don't realize is, is when people ask this question, you know, is, it, is accounting really that bad? Is it really? You know, we, we're trying, you know, one of, our, one of our missions is to try to make it sexy for everybody. You know? <laughs> but many times, uh, people feel that, again, uh, they, they really don't want to learn. Um, who remembers when they first started their business and they didn't think of accounting very much, they just thought about, you know, invoicing very much? Can I get a raise of hands? Can I get a show of hands? Yeah, a lot of us. And one of the things that people really, you know, weren't, uh, aren't prepared for is kind of like getting and really knowing the, that accounting acumen to navigate through distance, the different systems. And so we're going to kind of talk a little bit more about the, the 101, the basics of accounting today specifically, okay? But let's take a look here. So I'm going to try to be interactive here. I would love for people to kind of join in today. And, uh, and kind of uh, raise, the, raise some hands or ask some questions as we kind of do the presentation. But let's do one of these things. Let's say, I want, if you can, some people who are not afraid to maybe speak their mind, is there a way or is there, can you think of any words actually that m when we bring up the word accounting for your small business, what does it make you feel like? Anybody? Trapped, <laughs> okay, okay, anybody else? Someone said pain? Anybody else? Anxious, tedious, wow. Any positive, any, sorry? Communication. Communication. 
per I mean, I was, that, was, that was slightly positive. I, I prefer, I like that one. Anybody feel super adept to knowing what accounting is all about? No? Right. So this is how a ton of people feel. You know, we talk to a lot of business owners out there, and, you know, people said words like uh, terrified, clueless, panicked, out of control. When I asked that question one time before, a person said, I, it made me want to call my parents. <laughs> and it's true, right? A lot of the times, it's unfortunate. And if you think about it, it's kind of funny at the same time, but unfortunate. So let's do a little kind of fact, fact or fiction here, right? A myth or not. So I want to raise a hand. Who thinks accounting should be manual? A raise a hands for a yes. How about for those who say no? Raise your hands. Okay, a lot more of that. Perfect. Believe it or not, it's a trick question. <laughs> it doesn't have to be manual. It can be. But obviously, the more likely that you, you know, automate some things for yourself, it's going to be a lot easier for yourself as well, right? So, you know, automation of, let's say, for example, of tracking some expenses, maybe connecting something to like a bank account or a credit card allows you to really kind of have to uh, not have to enter everything in. And we'll talk a little bit more about kind of double entry and, and single entry accounting, which a lot of people sometimes don't know about, but actually is very important as well. Let's do another. So how about accounting is only important during tax time? Can we get a raise of hands for they believe yes? Okay. No. Anybody who says no. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. So you're right. The truth is accounting should not be should not be just done during tax time. It should be, this is a myth, of course. Um, tax time usually is the most crucial part of, of kind of the, the business's, you know, year. You know, usually they find out if they find out if they're in the deficit or not. And if you're really lucky and if you've been actually very uh, proactive with your, with your recordings of your business transactions, you're going to find out if you've been doing so far so good during the year. And one of the things as well is that it allows you to stay on top of your, st your finances, obviously, ahead of time by making sure that, um, that it's, it's done year round. Just remember that a lot of people don't realize this. If you keep track of your accounting, of your transactions, your income, and some of your expenses, believe it or not, you're actually going to be saving yourself a lot of money going to an accounting professional. Because here's a weird statistic, and a lot of people don't know this. Accountants, when we, we have, a, we have a, a network of accounting professionals, we have about 10,000 of them, and we did a survey with them, and if we found out that they spend 50% of their time, if not more, doing data entry or fixing errors. So if we're sending information to our accounting professionals to do that data entry for us, then the truth is, is that we're probably getting charged a lot more than we need to be. So just be aware of these things, right? There's a great way for us as small business owners to save some money and to be able to really be helpful uh, and be proactive towards, you know, during our tax season and actually getting, you know, making sure that accounting is done year round as opposed to just during tax time. So, so let's do one last one. So myth or not, okay, true or false, do you actually need an accountant? Those who say no, oh, okay, those who say yes. Yeah, believe it or not, this is a fact. People, people do need an accountant, okay? It's, a lot of the times people don't realize the amount of complex, uh, I guess, accounting information that needs to be handled to be able to provide your financials to you. Or even to be able to provide even better ad hoc services to you, let's say like consultative services to you. And one of the things that they would love to do is not necessarily do like the menial, you know, transaction capturing type of information, but they really want you to be able to be able to be, you know, focusing on your on your business, focusing on your trade, and actually growing. That's the that's, that's the number one priority for them because if they figure if they you grow, then hey, they can charge you more money down the line. No, I'm just joking. They can they can help you more. 
They can provide more valuable service for you. They can actually provide you in getting your business to the next step as opposed to. So believe it or not, not you know, there are a lot of tools out there that make things automated so that we don't really need a lot of accountants all the time, but it is necessary. You know, a lot of people, again, they forget that that's actually very much, uh, very much important. Um, so let's, then we did those. So let's talk a little bit more about the basics of accounting. Let's talk about single entry accounting, double entry accounting. Anybody know what double entry accounting is? Anybody? Perfect. Are we, are we an accounting professional? No, we're not. We know what double entry is? Perfect. So if the way I like to describe double entry accounting is actually, um, let's put it simply. I'm gonna, I wrote it down just in case I don't make any mistakes, okay? So double entry accounting basically, let's do this. This might be even a little bit easier to clarify. So if you guys can see that nice little, nice little slide on the screen there. So double entry accounting usually means that there's two things that are happening at once. Specifically speaking, if there's what's called a chart of accounts, different accounts that have to be accounted for, if something happens in one, it needs to be balanced on another chart. So, for example, let's take a look at the example that we see on the screen here. So, we're going to say, you know, Joe sells a box of cookies to Sandra for $100. Better be good cookies, right? Like, like those ones from this morning. What ends up happening is that there's a debit, of course, because they, we need to make sure that we actually uh, pass, pass on the obviously the, the cost of the, of the, of the amount and your invent, sorry, inventory goes down and obviously they gets, uh, people get, uh, when they pay you, you'll see the money come in. And so you're gonna kind of see these two things balance out quite, quite, quite simply. Now, the thing is, is that depending on your type of business, there's gonna be multiple types of accounts that you need to keep in check. And so this is where the complexity comes in. Sometimes we forget to add something or take away you know, something from those accounts. And so that's where a lot of the clerical issues come, in, come into play. But again, to make things less confusing, let's talk a little bit more about single entry accounting. So single entry accounting is actually one of the nicest things that uh, tax experts did for us. They basically got a chance to make things really simple for us so that we can track, obviously, some basic business transactions so that we can kind of see how businesses is doing. So I'll give an example of something. So single entry accounting is obviously simpler. You know, it's actually been deemed necessary, you know, it's for smaller businesses. And you can see that with single entry accounting, you don't necessarily have to worry about, you know, balancing, you know, different accounts necessarily. Um, but there is, let's do this over here. There is a necessity to know how you're gonna get your money in. So this is just a picture of an invoice to give an example of how you're gonna get some money in from, you know, to, in your business. Now, the things that single entry accounting says is simply that you need, you need to keep track of your revenue and you need to keep track of your expenses. So you know what's obviously, what's coming in as, uh, as gross revenue and you need to know what's going out, obviously, what the, what the costs are for you for running your actual, your, your beautiful show, whatever business that you're running. So in this case, we have, we have a, just an, an invoice kind of stating things like, hey, this is how you're gonna get your revenue. The other thing that we, I wanna talk a little bit more about is the expenses side of things. So there's a difference for some people who don't know this, there's a difference between ex just regular expenses and expenses that maybe you use to, uh, that you're gonna have to incur to make your product uh, in any way, shape, or form that you're gonna rebuild eventually for your clients. So there's like, you know, there's the cost of goods sold and obviously some of the expenses that are necessary just as you run businesses. So for example, if I'm a, let's change this up I think, if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a let's say, a, a, an artisan leather handbag, handbag, handbag maker, what ends up happening is that I'm most likely gonna need to incur the costs of the raw leather that I use. And that information, and sorry, that, that all that information or should be recorded of that specific expense into the cost of goods sold, as opposed to just my you know, regular expenses that maybe I'm, I'm tracking for, let's say, uh, pen and pa uh, paper or office expenses for you know, keeping track of, uh, of, um, of office you know, expenses that we have in general. 
I noticed that there's something wrong with this next slide. It looks like something might have been deleted, so I'm gonna try to move forward here with a little bit of a different scenario. So one of the things that you need to know is, oh, let me see if it's over here. There it is, perfect. Is what about invoices is necessary when tracking you know, single, entry, you know, single entry accounting? We're gonna talk a little bit more about terms and conditions. We're gonna talk about online payments. We're gonna talk again about that cost of goods sold that I just recently speak, spoke about. And on the expenses side, we're gonna talk about expense categories and also profit and loss and also customer service that's important. The reason why this is important is because obviously FreshBooks is able to provide a lot of these things and I wanna make sure that you guys realize what, uh, what some of those things are, of course. So let's talk about invoice basics. So here it is. So invoice basics, what a lot of people need to realize about invoices is that this is kind of like a bare, if you take a look, this is kind of like the bare bones of, a, of an actual invoice. You're gonna notice that um, it has a client's name, it has a client's customer, um, uh, sorry, client name and the, and, the, and, the, and the company name. It's also gonna have some items with taxes, of course, and a good description, hopefully. It'll also have dates, and hopefully, depending on the scenario, it'll, have a, it'll also have a logo, right? It makes you look a little bit more professional. This is important in kind of getting that information for the single entry accounting side of things. And there's other more complicated things that are necessary on an invoice, of course, so you can start collecting that data, so making your single entry you know, um, accounting a lot, a lot simpler. And one of the things is like due dates on an invoice. I mean, some people have that. They provide those, those, uh, those dates on an invoice because it's necessary for them to really find, know when they actually are, or when they are expecting their client to pay them. Let's take a look here. Did that change? Nope. Perfect, there it is. So terms and conditions is also important. Uh, terms and conditions is actually superbly important because it kind of sets the expectations for your clients and knowing how they're actually gonna get paid. So who knows in an average 30 day month, well let's say, uh, sorry, 29 day month, uh, the study says, how fast people are actually getting paid on an, in an average, uh, let's say 29 day month. Does anybody have a guess? Yeah, 90. Yeah, people are getting paid very, very, very slowly. Now, one of the things that happens is there needs to be a method of some way of, uh, of getting paid much quicker. And one of the things, believe it or not, one of the ways is by setting some terms and conditions or kind of like a, an expectation, setting an expectation to when you're actually going to get paid. Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the majority, believe it or not, is, is actually, if I think it's 49% it's of, of businesses are getting paid actually past you know, 90 days. Now, this is usually because they're using some type of tool that isn't necessarily helping them to be proactive. And specifically, they're maybe using like Word or Excel, let's say, to do invoices. Anybody do that here? Raise their hands. Yeah, it happens a lot. So that's the unfortunate truth. So the, the reality is, is that if you use a tool that's gonna to be a little bit more, how do you say, uh, automated, a little bit more helpful, it'll actually get you paid much quicker. So a tool like FreshBooks, there's a statistic, and it might be helpful for you guys to know, um, because we provide invoicing and single entry solutions for small service-based businesses, uh, people are actually getting paid uh, in 14 days of sending an invoice. So it's actually quite, quite quick, you know, in comparison to the norm. Um, and that's not including, um, the statistic of receiving online payments. So many of us, sometimes we deal with small businesses and maybe we get paid cash or check, and usually those are very quick, uh, hopefully, to, to receive, but sometimes a check can be quite long, depending on the scenario. Um, but terms and conditions really kind of helps you out to set the, again, set the expectation. And you can actually get paid much quicker if you're accepting credit card transactions. Is anybody here, is that, some, is that a norm for you, accepting credit card transactions? Can I get a raise of hands? Yeah, okay, for some. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably one of the quickest way to kind of get paid, uh, really providing that convenience. Um, and so when you send an invoice saying, please pay upon receipt, if there's an ability for you to actually have them pay via a payment gateway of some type or like a payment processor of some type, it's going to be fantastic and great for cash flow. And uh, that way, you know, we can pay our employees and, you know, uh, our vendors on time. And that's obviously a, a very good thing, especially when we're kind of running our own business. 
So let's talk a little bit more about online payments because this is actually a very, very interesting scenario. Um, so with online payments, um, many people, uh, when they send an invoice, the online payment side of things, when you can actually provide uh, the ability to get paid via credit card, like I mentioned beforehand, people are getting paid uh, very, very quick, you know, less than, less than 10 days. Um, actually, if two thirds of our own business uh, are actually getting paid within 24 hours uh, and with FreshBooks. So which is, is really, really important. Uh, again, very, very important for cash flow. Um, but what do you think, have you got, well, let's put it this way, a show of hands, how many of you guys have seen these little you know, devices that get put into the, uh, the bottom of a phone and they swipe your credit card before? Has anybody seen those? Yeah, those are, those are great. Again, there's a lot of payment processes out there that are providing that solution and making you get, receive your payments uh, of, 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 that, uh, of that sale much quicker. Um, does anybody know what the average, the average time it takes to get that money from an online payment processor? to actually into your bank account, what the average time frame is? 48. Well, we had a bunch, so we had 48, 48 hours? A few hours. So it actually ranges depending on who your payment processor is. So believe it or not, it's actually four to five days is, is usually the initial. But after that, usually it takes about, um, about 48 hours, actually about, to, uh, it's about 36, between 36 and 48 hours. Now, believe it or not, uh, we actually have uh, an individual here from FreshBooks who's actually one of our, one of our executive account, account managers. And you know, if you have any questions a little bit more about that space, believe it or not, um, there is that information available for you. We actually, it's free, you're not you have to sign up for any of the, uh, any of the accounts, of course, to find out some of that information. But if you're looking to get paid a little bit quicker, online payments is really the way to go, especially if you're a small business, again, looking to get paid as soon as possible so that cash flow can be super strong and healthy. So let's talk about expense categories. So there's, you know, a type of, you know, different expenses, as I mentioned beforehand. So first we have, you know, money that you're spending to run your business. And then there's, uh, you know, let's say online, let's say, let's give you an example. Let's say maybe like a paper for your printer, you know, and for office supplies, or maybe an online tool kind of like FreshBooks, you know, that you, there's, there's a monthly cost, maybe it's a $10 charge for you. You know, that's an expense for your, that, uh, that helps you run your business. And then on top of that, there's also gonna be, let's take a look over here. There's going to be what we call, oh, can you make that, can you see it, is that changing? Oh, perfect. There's different, there are obviously different types of expense um, categories, of course, all of them fitting the different uh, categories of what you need to be spending money on, let's say, for your business and such. But one of the things that I really wanted to show you, which I noticed that because we have a beautiful slide here that is just kind of showing you the different types of expenses, I want to talk a little bit more about kind of the cost of goods sold. So the other type of expenses that we have, of course, are the cost of goods sold. Uh, and uh, this might sound a little bit tricky, but you know, the cost of goods sold are basically an item that you need to, that you need to basically keep track of to run your business uh, that you'll eventually claim back when you actually uh, you know, send the invoice out to your client. So I wanna show you a bit of an example of that specifically. So here we have, you know, leather. Uh, sorry, Laura's leathers good, leathered goods. So I made that. I made that kind of um, uh, a little bit of a uh, of an example beforehand, where a person was making a custom, you know, handbag. So what ends up happening a lot? A lot of people don't realize this is that you need to make sure that those cost of goods sold are, you know, reported, you know, in a separate area and recorded uh, uh, in an area that says cost of goods sold. So that's super, super important. Uh, that way, you know that uh, you're not going to be essentially. Um, claiming those expenses uh, because you can't, because essentially you'll be rebilling the actual costs of your services, right? Uh, that'll be in, in the actual cost of your invoice of the, uh, of the handbag that you send back, that you, sent, that you sell to your client. And so it's really important that you realize that there needs to be the ability to differentiate those two things. The cost of goods sold and just your regular expenses for your business as well. So let's talk a little bit more about you know profit and loss. So this is a basic, a basic financial you know a report that many people see for their businesses. Uh, what I really want to talk about with regards to the um, the profit and loss report are things like does anybody let's just put it this way does anybody have an idea of what is actually being seen on a profit and loss report? Can I have a set of hands up? So we don't know. We have one person, two people, three, four, five, okay, there we go. Perfect. That don't know. 
sorry, that do know. So the, so the majority of us don't know exactly what's kind of on this uh, on this type of report. So I'm going to kind of explain it a little bit further. So uh, on the actual screen, you, on the actual screen, you should be able to see what your gross sales are. And you know, gross obvious the gross sales obviously is a bit of an inaccurate number um, because that those gross sales uh, they don't really show what you've actually made after you know you take into your expenses into account. So you'll notice that there it shows your gross sales. It'll show things like. Your cost of goods sold, which is obviously uh, what is necessary to sell your product. And then at the bottom, you'll also notice, I'm not sure if you can see that, yeah, is other expenses. And what it shows there is actually employee benefits that you're going to see there. That could actually be very, um, again, very different from, from the actual expenses for running your actual business and the product that you're actually going to be selling. So profit report will actually tell you how your business is doing. Again, it'll also be referred to you as a, uh, you'll also know it as a, probably as an income statement. Anybody heard that term instead of a pro of profit and loss? Yeah? Okay, fantastic. You know, it may be, you, it, this is something that you want to bring to you, your accountant, you know, when you're talking a little bit more about maybe strategy about how your business is running. And it's really important to do so because, uh, again, um, many of the accounting professionals out there not necessarily are going to be uh, super thrilled about being able to do uh, the transaction capturing out there that's available, um, you know, for them to do, simply because that's really not what they went to school for. What they really actually went to school for is to actually be able to be really great consultants to help you guys out to move your businesses forward. So again, if you guys can bring this information already to them, it'll actually help them decipher a little bit more what's happening in your business. And actually, they spend a lot less time doing the data entry side of things. So using a tool, again, like FreshBooks can hopefully help that exp and expedite that along for you guys. Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> So is it a small amount is what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I, 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 unfortunately, yes. It's just, an <laughs> just a bit of an example, of course. Um, so simple answer is, yeah, it is. It is very small. Now, again, for the type of businesses that we're dealing with, depending on uh, with, specifically with FreshBooks, like I said, the sweet spot is that zero to 10 employee range. So smaller business obviously would pay, spend a little bit less on that. So customer service is actually uh, a big deal, and uh, we talk about it about in FreshBooks quite a lot. And the simple answer is because uh, people don't realize um, good customer service until they've actually had great customer service. Uh, anybody, you know, probably can name off an array of different uh, companies out there that they feel is subpar in customer service. Um, and I think many of us as small business owners or business owners in general um, are trying to provide the best type of services to our clients, the best type of experiences to our clients. And you know, I think you know, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but there's an actual statistic on if you are nice to your clients, there's actually a percentage increase of how likely you get paid and how fast you get paid, believe it or not. So uh, this is important. It's super important. So I believe the, 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 magic, uh, the magic percentage is that, you know, 5% of your, of your biz, of, uh, of, of business owners actually look at, you know, your, your interactions with your, uh, with your clients, and let's say specifically through an invoice. Um, and people are willing to pay quicker if they feel that they're not dealing with, you know, a couple of tricks. And we've kind of heard that theme a little bit throughout the, the different uh, the different speakers today. You know, people saying, you know, be very, be, you know, be very, uh, I believe one person said, uh, don't be a jerk, right? It was one of the, <laughs> one of the key points, you know, because it's really important to make sure that uh, that longevity happens, that, that, uh, that experience helps out the client. Now, again, Terms and conditions were created, uh, you know, alongside with a, a bit of a due date that you should be able to see on the screen. So I'm not sure if you can see that there. There's going to be like send reminders, and these are actually nice reminders that you can provide for clients. You know, using a tool like FreshBooks, um, you know, basically reminders like a late payment reminder, allowing people to actually, you know. Be, uh, giving them a nice little nudge to when they're uh, how fast or or how quickly you want them to pay you. There's also uh, there's also uh, late fee charges. So there's also sometimes maybe people uh, 
to give them another nudge along, they may provide, uh, uh, let's say for example, a, a late charge for people paying it uh, uh, at a later time. Uh, and sometimes people do the opposite. People say, hey, maybe I'll give you a little bit of a discount to be able to uh, pay me much quicker than what the terms are saying. And so this is kind of important and it also kind of falls into the whole customer service approach with you dealing with your clients. Um, obviously there's, there's, let me just see if I can make this change here. Now, there are many businesses out here that are now, or actually that are taking advantage of the fact of being able to have the online landscape, um, you know, allowing them to reach much more people. And so many of us sometimes may have clients in the U.S. and also clients uh, maybe uh, uh, outside of Canada and the U.S. Um, and so what ends up happening and what I'm getting at is the fact that there, you know, we should remember that a tool that is going to help us out to especially do our invoicing and help us out in, in being more proactive and uh, with, our, with our business should have the ability to kind of handle the multi-currency effect of things. So, uh, you know, some of us, you know, love to, you know, maybe build uh, our clients in US dollars and maybe that might be a, a good opportunity for us to do and there should be that functionality there of course uh, obviously for the different people that you serve now um I'm not saying, you know, be available and have all these currencies available um to be able to accept those currencies um in all over the world uh, you know there's multiple currencies out there uh, but what we're saying is that the, the convenience factor is really going to help you along from invoicing your client and actually get them to pay you much quicker All right. So now I know I talked uh, very, very quickly on a couple of things specifically about how invoicing and expenses can be a little bit helpful, a little bit more helpful by and automating it, you know, with the tool, of, with the help of a tool like FreshBooks. But, you know, one of the things that we should realize is as long as you find a tool that is helpful for you to be proactive, to be on top of all of your, uh, let's say, of your, of your accounts receivable, you know, something as automated as maybe FreshBooks is or the different, you know, the different tools of the world out there that we all know of. People may have, has anybody heard of, of maybe Wave Accounting? Okay, perfect. We've heard of QuickBooks. Yes, we said we did. Perfect. Anybody heard of Sage? Okay, perfect different tools for different necessities, right? They're all out there for us. And again, if you fall into the category where you're kind of usually, um, I would say, billing for your time, billing for your, you know, for the efforts that you're providing, and you're kind of relying on, on, on invoices to actually get that payment from the clients and the services that you're providing, then you should try to take a look at something as, as simple as FreshBooks. Hopefully making accounting, making you not feel terrible, as we mentioned, in, in panic, uh, like we mentioned earlier. So online accounting makes life easier. You know, keeping your records is a year, is an all year type of thing that we need to kind of be uh, really, really uh, be diligent about. Accountants are our strategy partners, whether we like to believe it or not. They can actually provide us a lot of great help, a lot of great insight to you know, furthering along our business. Being friendly with your uh, terms and conditions will pay off, like as we mentioned prior. Online payments are something that we should consider so that we can actually get paid much quicker. Expenses are different from the cost of goods sold. And net profit is more useful necessarily <laughs> than gross profit, right? Because it obviously lets us know where, we are, where our business stands. Becoming automated, you know, and having those automated reminders is actually very, very important. And so hopefully those things can help you to help you and your business move forward. All right, guys? You guys have any questions? I know that we have just a couple moments here. We'll be able to help answer anything that you guys uh, have any questions about. Yes? That's correct. Yes, we're actually it's a completely uh, completely cloud-based service, um, and so it's accessible like to your mobile phone, to your tablet device, as well as a desktop tool, as long as it's connected to the internet. Yes. Yeah, great question. So believe it or not, we actually have multiple locations of different servers that we have. So some are in Canada and some are in the U.S., believe it or not. Um, and the reason why that is is because sometimes what ends up happening is that uh, multiple redundancies allow for you to actually have that information stored and available to you just in case there's a natural disaster, right? Knock on wood, something happens. Um, so it's more of a security feature. Um, 
Now, a lot of people usually say things like there's a follow-up question usually to that, which is, oh, what about the U.S. Patriot Act, right? As to, you know, if I have my information here in Canada, will it be, you know, available for, you know, the U.S. to see if, if it's... Uh, if they ask for it. So simple answer is, is unfortunately, or the, the, the reality is, is that yes, they can ask for it, but I mean, if, if we're doing good business practices and there isn't any issue with us, you know, let's say for example, uh, doing anything, you know, quote unquote, should say shady, then it's, it's not gonna, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, now, believe it or not, what I would recommend is obviously, aside from talking to your accountant, if that ever happens, or talk to your, uh, I would talk to a lawyer as well, just to make sure obviously everything is copacetic and can be followed through, but usually it's not a big deal. And I'm glad to say that it's not something that happens quite often. Anybody else? Oh, great question. So the fee for the tool like FreshBooks starts off as as ten dollars, I think, I believe, uh, per month. It's a subscription-based service. Um, we have multi-million-dollar businesses as well using the tool, specifically in maybe in an invoicing workflow uh, and multiple other tools. But I mean, those it can go as high as we've seen about hundred, hundred, two hundred dollars per month. Uh, that's right. So it's not, let's say, well, I mean, Excel now provides a cloud-based service now, right? You're not, it's, not like a, it's not like a cartridge that you're downloading onto your computer. It's, not a, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual internet-based service that you can actually access through the internet and accessible anywhere you like. Just one. I think we had another question over here. So can you repeat the, the, the question one more time? I just at the beginning, I didn't hear. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So simple answer is that, believe it or not, we actually send it on your behalf. Um, so there is an email that you would provide for your business, and we send it on your behalf. So there isn't going to be any advertising information on that. So the great thing, actually, it actually works as more of an online portal for a client where they can log in themselves, they can view what, they, what they're what they looking for, uh, and the email is just a notification saying, hey, this is an invoice that's come through, as opposed to that with other information that we want, might want to target like advertisement and such. That's not in there at all. Perfect. We had another question. Somebody else did ask. Yeah, great question. So we don't hold your information hostage in any way, shape, or form. So don't worry. Um, the a lot of the information is actually you can download it and actually keep it as in local records for yourself. Um, you can deactivate your account with us, um, uh, or even better, um, let's say for example, many people don't want to download it; they just want to have access to it. We actually let you if you cancel your account, we let you have access to your account uh, with some parameters, of course, that uh, allow you to kind of keep that information for as long as you like. You can pass the seven-year record if you prefer. Yeah, so it's uh, definitely available. Any other questions? No? Well, perfect. Thank you very much for taking your time. It's my time here today, guys. Have a great one. Thanks, Dustin. Yeah, thank you. Bye.